All right, geometry students, let's take a look at those S, A, S, 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 and then our new ones, A, S, A, and A, A, S. I notice I've got that wrong in the title there. Uh, congruence uh, statements to see if we can figure things out about congruent triangles in these problems. Let's start with letter A. State the postulate that can be used to prove the triangle's congruent. Okay, so I've got side, 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 angle, side, Angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Let's see which one this is. Um, this one is, I have an angle here, an angle here, and a side here that are marked congruent over here. Notice I'm not given whether these two sides have congruent lengths, uh, but uh, I do know that angle, side, angle, congruence applies. Two angles and the included side between them. Therefore, these two angles are congruent by angle, side, angle congruence. And then the sides of DEF, well, since AB is 10, DE has to be 10, AC is 11, DF has to be 11, and then BC is 15, uh, EF has to be 15. That's all stated here, uh, but you don't have to worry about going through that as long as you just know that the corresponding parts are congruent. All right, now we need to do a proof. This one's gonna be a little bit harder. Uh, we need to prove, and we're gonna do a two column proof here, okay? Uh, we need to prove that ABC is congruent to DEC. ABC congruent to DEC. Hmm, how are we going to do that? Well, I know that at least uh, my given, and I'm gonna play it fast and loose in this video with the symbols, so whether I do an overline or an angle symbol, um, I'm going to talk about what I'm, what I'm describing. When you write a two column proof, since you're not making a video and talking about it, you absolutely need to put all of the symbology in to prove that uh, um, I know that you're talking about segment AB and angle ABC, for instance. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to say that AB is congruent, okay, to DE. And how do I know that? Well, that's given from the drawing and from what it says is given, okay? Uh, so that's my first given statement. Uh, I should number these as well. So that's number one, number one. Number two is going to be, uh, let's see, the other thing I'm given is that AB is parallel to DE. AB uh, parallel to I wonder if I could just do this. AB is parallel to DE. Look at that, that's beautiful. That's also given. Okay, now what else do I know here? Hmm, I only have one side and I don't have any angles yet, but I know that uh, if, if um, let's see, I could state that BE is a transversal across a, B, and D, E. And how would I know that? Well, that's really the definition of a transversal because it's just a line that crosses two other lines. And not only that, I have already established that A, B, and D, E are parallel. So now any of my theorems or postulates related to uh, parallel lines and a transversal are gonna play out. So that means that uh, A, B, E, for instance, ABE and CED, those two angles, are alternate interior angles. And that's by the definition of alternate interior. Uh, so we're just going to say definition of alternate interior angles. There we go. Stretch this out a little bit. Fix my accidentally mixed up word there. Okay. And then I can say that ABE is congruent to, okay, I would use the congruent symbol if I had it available, um, CED. And uh, that's a theorem from investigation one where we talked about how if, we talked about ways to find congruent angles if lines were parallel. Um, so this is the um, postulate on um, I mean, let me just look it up here really quickly. So I'm going to go to investigation one, and I'm going to just take a look at the postulates that are there. And sure enough, in investigation one, postulate uh, theorem, it's a theorem, 
theorem 10, 1 is the alternate interior angles theorem. And uh, what that says is that if two lines are parallel and a transversal crosses them, the alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so I have a set of congruent angles. I have a side. So I have a side and an angle. Hmm, what about, I wonder if we could get uh, BCA and DCE. I see that those are vertical angles. Okay, uh, and let's see, that's by the definition of vertical angles. Angles that are across from each other when two lines intersect. Okay, let's do number seven then, which says that BCA is congruent to DCE. BCA is congruent to DCE. And that goes all the way back to our lesson on, uh, I believe it was lesson six, which talked about uh, pairs of angles. And in that lesson, we had theorem 6-4, the vertical angle theorem. So I'm just going to note that. Uh, theorem 6-4, vertical angle theorem, which states that all vertical angles are congruent. Okay. That brings us almost to the end here. Number eight, number eight. Um, if I know that these two are congruent to each other, let's see, do I have, I have an angle, an angle, and a non-included side. Uh, I'm just going to say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle D, let's see, let me make sure it gets right, ABC, CED. Uh, nope, that's not right. Uh, it would be A, B, C, D, E, C. Um, because I remember, I have to name the corresponding angles in the same order. Uh, a, B, C is going to D, D, E, C, and that is by angle, angle, side. I have two angles and a non-included side. Congruence. All right, that is how you work a proof problem related to this. Let's keep moving on. The next part of this, we're going to, if two triangles are congruent by the angle-angle side theorem, what is the area of each triangle? Well, for this one, if they're congruent, that means that their corresponding sides are congruent. And uh, this is going to be a pretty straightforward one to figure out. If the corresponding sides are congruent, that means that for letter C, 4x plus 6 equals 2x plus 10. I can solve for x here. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. It gives me 2x equals, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides, 4, 2x equals 4. That means that x equals 2. But that wasn't the question. The question is, what is the area? Well, now I know 4 times 2 is 8 plus 6 is 14. This is also going to be 14. 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 10 is 14. Um, 6 or I'm sorry, 8, I have 8 as a base, times 14 times 1 half. I can just do 14 times 1 half is 7, 7 times 8, 56. The area of my triangle should be 1 half the base times the height. Uh, we'll just do that, equals 56, and it would be, uh, let's see, units squared, but I don't have a unit here. Let's see if I'm right. 56 square units, there we go. All right, for letter D, we need to prove that these angles, are, triangles, are congruent. Um, here I have an angle, an angle, and I'm just going to state this one. We have an included, we have a side that's the same for both triangles. So I know that CD is congruent to CD because of the reflexive property of congruence. That means that I have an angle, an angle, and a side that are congruent. So these two triangles will be congruent to one another by angle, angle, side congruence. Okay, so I'm just going to state that. You would have to actually write that as a proof if you were going to answer that, but that one's pretty straightforward. So I thought I would just state AAS congruence here. And then we are on our last one, uh, letter E. This one is a little bit complicated because you really have to think through. A uh, standard size envelope is nine and a half inch by four inch rectangle. The envelope is folded and glued from a sheet of paper shaped like the figure shown. 
prove that if JKNM is a rectangle, so it's given that JKNM is a rectangle, then JI is congruent to ML. So I'm trying to prove that this is congruent to this. I could do that by angle side angle congruence if I, if I had an angle, a side, and an angle. Well, I'm just going to write this out. Uh, we'll just do this. One, uh, and we'll state that JKNM is a rectangle. And we know that because that's given. Uh, number two, I'm going to say that JK is congruent to MN. And that is um, by the definition of a rectangle, which says that opposite sides are congruent and then all of the angles are 90 degrees. But because opposite sides are congruent, I know that I can state that JK is congruent to MN. And then if JK is congruent to MN, I know that triangle JK, uh, let me make sure I get these letters right, JKI is congruent, and I'm just gonna write the word tri, so we know we're talking about a triangle, is congruent to triangle um, M, N, L. Uh, and that's by ASA congruence. Okay, now if those triangles are congruent, I can say that, uh, let's see, what am I trying to prove here? JI is congruent to ML. I can state that because of C, P, C, uh, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, CPCTC. Um, that's a statement that I can use in proofs because it's a corresponding part of, of a congruent triangle. Uh, these two triangles are congruent, that corresponding segment is congruent. All right, that is how we do that one. Um, that, by the way, was letter E. Let's see if I can label that here so we know what we were doing. All right, you should be fully prepared to do numbers 1 through 30 in this lesson at this point. Uh, go ahead and get started.